Hello friends, this is Shubham and today I am going to discuss about the antipsychotics. Antipsychotic means against the psychosis, means these drugs are going to work against the psychosis. So before talking about the antipsychotics, we should know about the term the psychosis, that what does it mean? Actually psychosis is a very dangerous mental disorder. Uh, there is the loss of interaction with the reality in such patients means these patients won't be able to interact properly with the reality. So they won't be able to contact with the reality, actually. That means they have their own world. Now psychosis, these patients are generally have, if you talk about the psychosis, you can divide it. Psychosis. You can divide the symptoms of psychosis in two parts. That they have the schizophrenia, which is very dangerous. Schizophrenia, and they will have the very severe mood disorders. Very severe mood disorders. Now, schizophrenia, let's talk about the schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, unfortunately, it is not rare. And this is also very dangerous. Now, in schizophrenia patients, they have some positive symptoms and they have some negative symptoms. Now, positive symptoms means that there is some addition to their characters. And negative symptoms means which the characters which are not usually present uh, in the normal human being. Now, so they have the positive and negative symptoms further some positive symptoms and some negative symptoms okay so in positive symptoms a patient will suffer from the delirium which means they have some illusion problems they have thought disorders they won't be able to think properly. Thought disorders. They have the hallucinations. They will have the hallucinations and mainly the auditory hallucinations. Means these patients would hear something which is actually not present over there means they are hearing this abnormal sounds which are usually not present over there. So mainly they have the three symptoms in the positive one is that they have the delirium, thought disorders means they, these persons won't be able to think properly and efficiently and the hallucinations and particularly the auditory hallucinations. However, there could be the visual hallucinations too means they would they can see some uh, abnormal objects like some aliens or something is crawling uh, on the wall or something like that which is not happening over there actually. Now let's talk about the negative symptoms. In negative symptoms social withdrawal means they don't want to interact with the persons in the society. Social withdrawal they will have the Behavioral disorders, behavioral disorders, also flat effect, now you know about the social withdrawal and the behavioral disorders, but what does it mean the flat effect? Flat effect means that these persons lost the ability to display their emotions means if something dangerous happens to you, you will immediately respond to that. But these persons won't be able to respond to such conditions. Means they won't be able to show their emotions. So this is the flat effect. Means the loss of capabilities to show emotions. Facial muscles of such patients are not able to respond. This is the flat effect. 
So this was about some symptoms of schizophrenia. That's positive symptoms and negative symptoms. Later on, we will talk about the drugs that antipsychotics are divided into the typical and atypical antipsychotics. Typical, you can say the first generation drugs, and atypical, you can say the second generation drugs. Now, most typical drugs, which means the first generation antipsychotics, they work on the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. And more atypical drugs, they work on the positive symptoms as well as on the negative symptoms too. So, actually in schizophrenia, what happens in the brain, if you talk about, there is the surge of dopamine in the CNS. There are a lot of dopamine, so that's why they could have the extrapyramidal symptoms or they, they could have the uh, positive symptoms or negative symptoms. Now let's talk about the mechanism that how uh, dopamine actually acts over there and how dopamine is causing these symptoms. So now let's talk about the mechanism over there. Very brief review of the mechanism. Actually, let's suppose, for example, this is the presynaptic cleft, and here we have the postsynaptic cleft. And here is the synaptic gap, as you only know. Now, here is L tyrosine, L tyrosine, which will convert into levodopa, which will convert into levodopa with the help of an enzyme, tyrosine, tyrosine hydroxylase. Tyrosine hydroxylase. Now, levodopa further converts into the dopamine. Into the dopamine. With the help of an enzyme again, dopa carboxylase. So it is working over here, and this enzyme is working over here. Okay, now this dopamine will release into the synaptic gap. For example, this is the dopamine over here, they will come over here in the synaptic gap, and over here in the Actually, in the presynaptic cleft and postsynaptic cleft, there are the receptors, dopamine receptors. And there are various other receptors, for example, for the acetylcholine 2, cholinergic receptors or adrenergic receptors. But we are talking about here the dopamine receptors. So, for example, they are present over here. These are the receptors for the dopamine, for example. And in the schizophrenia or the psychosis patients, what happens that more and more dopamine is releasing into the synaptic gap. Okay, so there will be more dopamine over here in the synaptic gap. There is the more dopamine over here, and they will bind to the dopamine receptors. We have the five kinds of receptor dopamine: D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. So they bind to the receptors, basically onto the D2 receptors. So this dopamine will bind to the receptors and they will exert their effect. Actually in psychosis patients, same exactly happens that dopamine will be produced more and more and they will release into the synaptic gap. And later they will bind to the dopamine receptors and they will exert their effect. For example, contraction of the muscles or inhibition of the muscles. Now, this was about the brief mechanism of the dopamine that how they are exerting their effect and how the dopamine is responsible for the psychosis patient. Now let's talk about some differences between the drugs. How 
the antipsychotics can relieve the patient of psychosis. However, psychosis patient can't be treated properly. Only very few lucky patients can be healed completely after the treatment with the antipsychotics. Otherwise, schizophrenia or psychotic patient, this is the more severe disease. They can't be treated properly or they can't be treated completely, you can say, with the antipsychotics. Now, antipsychotic drugs, they are divided into two parts. Typical antipsychotics, typical antipsychosis, psychotics and atypical antipsychosis, antipsychotics. Antipsychotics are also called as neuroleptics. So you can say typical neuroleptics or atypical neuroleptics. Typical or you can say first generation also. These are the first generation drugs. And these are the second generation drugs. More newer drugs. These are the more older ones and the, those are the latest drugs. Now let's talk about these two kinds of antipsychotics and let's compare between them. Now antipsychotics as you can understand by the mechanism that they bind to the dopamine receptors and block them. So the dopamine would not be able to bind to their dopamine receptors. So the psychosis patient can feel or can be relieved by the dopamine blockers or antipsychotics. Now, antipsychotic, typical antipsychotics, they mainly bind to the D2 dopamine receptors. They may, mainly bind to the D2 dopamine receptors. They block these receptors. If you talk about the atypical one, they bind to the serotonin receptors. 5-hydroxyl tetramine 2 receptors. as well as they bind to the D2 receptors too. But they bind to them very transiently. Means if there will be the surge of the dopamine, then they can be removed from there and dopamine can bind to them. So they bind very tightly to the dopamine receptors, typical one and atypical one, they do not bind very tightly to the dopamine receptors. They basically bind to the serotonin receptors, 5 hydroxy determined 2 receptors. However, clozapine, which is one of the drugs in the atypical one, they can bind, it can bind to the D1, D2, D3, D4 and D5, all the receptors, as well as it can bind to the serotonin receptors and as well as some cholinergic, alphadrenergic and some histamine receptors too. So as typical antipsychotics, they bind to the D2 dopamine receptors, they will have more extrapyramidal symptoms. Now, what kind of extrapyramidal symptoms do they cause? Extrapyramidal symptoms. Now, let's talk about the extrapyramidal symptoms. As the patients, anti-psychosis uh, patients, are using these drugs, they can suffer from the dystonia in case of overdoses. They can suffer from the dystonia within few hours to few days. So they can suffer from dystonia within few hours, within few hours to few days. They can suffer from akinesia. They can suffer from the akinesia within few days to few weeks. And what is akinesia? It is something like Parkinson-like syndrome. Means the person would not be able to initiate the steps. If he is thinking to going somewhere, so he would not be able to initiate his steps. Or somehow, if he start walking, then he won't be able to stop suddenly. So this is the symptom like Parkinson-like sy symptom. However, Parkinson and the psychosis, they are both 
very different to each other. So take ion is here. You can say within few days these symptoms can appear in such patients when they are on, when they are on the typical antipsychotics. Also, they can suffer from akathisia. Now, what is akathisia? It is the restlessness in the body of, of such patients. Means they won't be able to uh, stand still. They will uh, all the time. They will be in the moving position. For example, they are moving their hands like this, or they are moving their legs all the time. So there is the restlessness condition. So akathisia. Within few weeks, you can say. Within few weeks. Now, there is one more symptom, and which is very dangerous and irreversible too. These three symptoms can be reversible when the doctor would say the patient that please stop these typical ant antipsychotics. But the fourth one, that is tardive dyskinesia. This is irreversible. So it won't stop if you will abrupt the typical antipsychotics. So, tardive dyskinesia. And it develops from few months to years. Tardive dyskinesia. This is the slowly it develops and the person would not be able to initiate the movements or the person will not, not be able to move. Now, <clears throat> also, as I talked that already mentioned that about the typical ones, they mostly they work on the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So they work on the, they work on the positive symptoms, positive symptoms of as far as atypical are concerned, they work on the positive symptoms as well as they work on the negative symptoms too. That's why they are more efficient as compared to the typical one. So they work on both positive as well as negative symptoms of psychosis or schizophrenia. Also, as they bind to the serotonin receptors more and they transiently bind to the D2 dopamine receptors, so they won't have much extra primary effects. So this is also the reason that atypical drugs are more safe than typical ones. So they don't have extra primary symptoms. Extra primary. they don't have okay now now we know that uh, typical drugs are more efficient over the typical ones but doctors still they give the typical antipsychotics to the patients why because they are more affordable and these drugs are more expensive so as atypical drugs are not so affordable so doctors uh, prescribe the typical antipsychotics over the atypical antipsychotic drugs. So these are more, you can say, more inexpensive. And these are the expensive ones. And these typical antipsychotics as they bind to the dopamine D2 receptors, also they, uh, they may cause the anticholinergic effects like there will be dry mouth or fecal or urinary retention. So they can cause the anticholinergic effects too. However, in a typical uh, antipsychotic drugs, they can also cause the anticholinergic effect as well as some antihistamine or some anti 
at energetic effects too. So this was about the, some difference between the typical and the atypical antipsychotics. Now if we talk about the therapeutic uses, where they can be used, very simple you can understand that antipsychotics are used for the psychosis or schizophrenia. Also they can be used for the nausea and vomiting too. Sometimes they are used as antimatics, emesis which means vomiting. Sometimes they are used, used as antimatics too. So they can be used against the schizophrenia, psychosis, or they can be used for the nausea and vomiting too. Now this was about the differences between the typical and atypical antipsychotics. In the next section I will talk about the drugs, that which drugs comes into the category of typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics. So see you in the next section. Thanks for watching this video.